absolutely straw into gold is the Arts Council of Winston-Salem's latest exhibit. It's a photographic series that highlights the cultural legacy of African ancestral hair sculpture. <laughs> Through, this is through looking at the work of prominent braider and visionary Rosa Malakia Johnson. Yeah, the exhibit will be on display all through early March in the Milton Road Center for the Arts, but this Friday they'll hold an opening artist reception from 5 until 7. Let me rephrase that. I don't think it starts until early March. I don't think I said it right that way. <laughs> and joining us now is a woman of the hour, Miss Rosa Malakia Johnson. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. So you are known as the queen mother of braids, but the work you have done is also art. So tell us, where do you draw your inspiration from? First of all, thank you for having me here. And this month is also Black History Month. So it's so appropriate that my work, which is historical, is being shown this month, being so showcased this month. I draw most of my inspiration from African art. I initially started studying masks and fabric and different aspects of the African culture, and I incorporated it into my hair design. Thank you first for clarifying when it's on display. So it's on display now for Black History Month. Thank you. Uh, Rosa, when did you know that braiding was something that you wanted to make a career out of? Well, that would be in the 70s when I initially started braiding. I had four children to raise, and um, the people around me at that time was Abby Lincoln and Red Fox and those kinds of people, and they inspired me to braid. They loved wearing the braids, and they were willing to compensate me for doing the work. And once I saw that I could support my family from braiding hair, I continued on. Absolutely, Miss Johnson. And when you think about it, that's such a core memory for mm -hmm. a lot of little black girls across the country, getting your hair braided mm -hmm. and what it means and how it feels to sit in that chair. It may hurt at times, <laughs> but the out, the, the lasting, like the way it looks at the end is just incredible. So I have to ask you, you also have had some very cool experiences over the years as well, working with the artist Stevie Wonder. Please share a little bit more about That's this. Cool. <laughs> yes, I, I was fortunate enough to start braiding Stevie's hair in the 70s. And I would travel with him all over the world. We went to the Japan Music Festival. We went to the 48th State Tour here, went to the European Tour. And Stevie was a wonderful person to work with and for. He loved wearing the braids, and the more beads I put on his hair, the better for him. He loved the weight of it. And of course, I would describe the different colors. For some of his album covers, like the Hotter Than July album, since I knew it was going to be a kind of a hot, you know, uh, album, all of the beads I used on there were uh, hot colors, reds and yellows and oranges, and of course gold. I always incorporated gold in Stevie's hairstyle. For the Secret Life of Plants album cover, and for that tour, I incorporated more earth tones. For some of the Grammy hairstyles, they were more elaborate, always with gold, not gold plated, and sometimes gold filled because we had a very lovely budget for his fees. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Wow, the memories that you have, I'm sure, are just amazing. I feel really special that we get to have you on our show and hear from you. Uh, tell us about your aunt, Maya Angelou, and other prominent women in your life that have certainly made an impact on you personally, but also artistically. Well, of course, my aunt Maya, bless her heart, she introduced me to Africa and African culture. She was, she had property in Ghana at the time and she would return with stories and gold, gold earrings and cloth. And she has been in my life all my life uh, from the time I was first born. I'm her only niece and she's actually my only aunt. And when I moved here to Winston-Salem, at her suggestion, I uh, became her archivist and I archived all of her papers. 
which are now at the Smithsonian, mm. the Schomburg, and Wake Forest Rare Books Room. My aunt really has been, my aunt and my mother were very uh, instrumental in my life and helped me tremendously with my children. Ms. Johnson, such a, a storied history that you're, you're sharing with us and, you know, in these situations we like to, to bring knowledge to those who, who might want to get into creative fields mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there something that you would want uh, to share with them? Well, first of all, just remain open and travel if you can. Travel will open up your mind and your spirit and your eyes to all kinds of things that you have not known possible. And remain open and try those new ideas. Draw them out, write them down, because all things are possible. Thank you for joining us this morning, Ms. Mm -hmm. Johnson. We certainly appreciate your time. And remember, everyone at home, you can check out the Straw Into Gold exhibition right now through March 11th. For more information, just head to the website on your screen, intothearts.com. And once again, where this exhibit is, I would like to tell you the where Milton it's on Road display, yeah. the Milton Road Center yeah. for the Arts in Winston-Salem. And that reception is tomorrow evening. I'm sure it'll be a really nice yeah. event from five until seven. Thanks again, Ms. Johnson.